Hello, welcome there, Linus, and welcome. Six five six five six five six five six five six five. Welcome. <laughs> Benefits of starting the stream early. I get to read out all of the more complicated names joining us early. Welcome, Gobli, Hader, Idris, Paul. Welcome. Great to see you guys joining us so early. Most of the time. Um, yeah, I think we got quite an interesting episode coming up today. Um, I'm also not so deep into invoice financing, so that is going to be, um, yeah, very interesting show for me at least, hopefully for you guys as well. I'm getting good feedback from Twitter that my audio should be working. Maybe I can get some emojis going here in the chat if everything is being well received on your end as well. Yeah, maybe Linus, you can give me a thumbs up or something to indicate that I'm actually audible. Bender coming in hot with the thumbs up, I think. And Gobli, all right. Thank you, guys. I think that should work out. I'll have another sip of water and we'll be waiting for Ibrahim to pop in. And then we can get started. Thank you guys for joining my audio check and we'll get started in a minute. And there we have Ibrahim. Let's get you up on stage. Let's see. You're still showing as a listener. Ah, okay. Now you are up on stage. Shall we do a quick uh, mic check? For sure, for sure. Good morning, everyone. How, how's it going? Hey, Ibrahim. Wow, very crisp audio quality. You'll have to let me know what uh, microphone you're using after this space. Uh, wow. Yeah. Impressive. Never had somebody with such a good mic here on the show. It should make for a very pleasant one this time around. Awesome. So yeah, let me get the introduction over with. So welcome everybody to build sphere number 16. Today we are joined by invoice mate just to talk a little bit about build sphere as a format. This is basically intended to allow the projects that are building on IOTA EVM to showcase what they are doing. The community can get up on stage at the end of it, ask questions, and um, yeah, hopefully learn a little bit more about Invoice Mate today. So at the end, we'll let you know that you can raise your hands. If you have any questions, then we will, of course, be happy to answer them. Um, yeah, with that out of the way, how's it going, Ibrahim? Going well, going well. Uh, thank you so much for hosting this uh, Build Sphere, and uh, really ha excited to spend the next couple of uh, minutes with you guys, and you know, sort of get deep dive into the IOTA ecosystem. It's my first AMA with the the IOTA ecosystem ever since we've been part of it. So really excited uh, to explore and uh, listen to what the community has to say. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us, Ibrahim. Uh, why don't we start out with an introduction about yourself and also the role that you play at InvoiceMate? For sure. So uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Ibrahim, and I'm the head of Web3 and Innovation at InvoiceMate. Uh, I started this journey since the foundation, actually. Um, we've been uh, building uh, InvoiceMate since 2021. And we went live uh, with our Web2 products back in July 2023. And we're in the beta version of our Web3 stage uh, up until now. And that's why we are here to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing with IOTA and uh, what is InvoiceMate in general. So, yeah, this is a bit of a background about me. I am based out of Dubai, UAE. Uh, originally, I'm from Pakistan. But uh, uh, the headquarters of the company is in Dubai and been living in Dubai since the last 11 odd years. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction. Yeah, I think you already mentioned a good starting point here for our talk, and that is what is invoice financing? Maybe you can give us an uh, idea. Let's assume everybody is starting at zero knowledge here. And yeah, maybe you can give us a quick roundabout here. Yeah, so essentially invoice financing is uh, a form of lending, a form of a loan. And the loan is basically uh, collateralized or you can say the loan is given on the basis of future receivables. So let's say I'm a company and I have sold some services to uh, Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola now owes me uh, my dues. 
Normally in the business world, uh, the payment terms are between 60 to 90 days. During that time, uh, SMEs or small medium businesses face a lot of cash flow issues. To tackle that cash flow issues, they can basically present their invoice as a collateral, nothing else. They don't need to, uh, you know, sort of mortgage their house or their buildings or and so, so forth, any other uh, tangible asset. They can just present their invoice. And on the basis of that invoice, they get a loan to cover their operational cost until the invoice is cleared. So that's to sum it up. That's basically invoice financing uh, in a very basic generic manner. Yeah, very easily understandable the way you explained it. Um, yeah, I already prefaced our talk here with uh, me not being very knowledgeable about invoice financing. Um, yeah, so maybe you can give us an idea about the industry, like what is the size, annual volumes, anything that can give us a little bit of an idea uh, of how big of an industry we are talking about. For sure. It's uh, it's actually one of the most silent industries, but it's a huge industry out there. It's a more than $3.6 trillion industry as I'm speaking right now. These are the stats from yesterday. Uh, so in uh, in total, the invoice financing industry is more than uh, $3.6 uh, trillion. And it is projected to hit uh, $6 trillion by 2032. Uh, by trade finance capital. And this is like uh, a really booming industry in uh, multiple regions of the world. And normally this uh, uh, service of invoice financing is accessible by corporates, large corporates, big companies. But we are here to change that. And we are here to provide this service to small, medium businesses as well to basically solve their cash flow problems. Yeah, uh, that sounds great. I mean, um, invoice financing, as you said, has been, um, yeah, I like the term, a silent industry. So far, at least, uh, at, let me start over there. As far as I know, at least, um, invoice financing in Web3 is not really having any connections so far. Uh, why do you think that is, that Web3 and invoice financing is only now really um starting to see some traction really yeah so uh jonathan the point is that invoice financing and blockchain go hand in hand they, these are literally you can say made for each other i'll tell you the reason why invoice financing industry has been uh facing some issues that's why it's pretty silent the biggest issue is about fraudulent uh, credentials and uh, fake invoices and with blockchain, you can solve those problems. So that's why with the real world asset tokenization vertical uh, popping up and more and more assets being tokenized, the private credit or the invoice financing uh, uh, industry is now coming on chain, allowing on chain investors to invest into short term loan prepositions, which are collateralized by invoices, which are then tokenized as real world assets. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, just as you are explaining it, um, a story comes to mind. I think some guy has been sending fake invoices to Facebook for years and they just paid them. Exactly. <laughs> it took them years to, yeah, yeah, it took them years to figure out. And I mean, of course, blockchain can eliminate that. So, uh, absolute tangible use case here for blockchain, uh, to make sure the invoices are really real they are based on something and not just made up probably a bigger problem for the uh, larger companies than the smaller ones but uh, yeah makes absolute sense to me um so let's talk a little bit about who can join invoice financing are there any uh, requirements to join for the businesses and what is the funnel to get into that yeah, so of course there is, there are some prerequisites uh, in order to apply for invoice financing. Number one being, of course, you need to have a cr uh, credible invoice and a uh, transaction that actually took place. So invoice financing, the basis of invoice financing are uh, essentially you need to have a running business. A business should be at least th uh, three to six months old. It should be producing revenue. It should be doing frequent transactions. And that's some of the basic requirements for invoice financing. And of course, once you have met those in, uh, criteria, you need to have uh, a good uh, financial statements and then uh, some tangible assets as well that are you're selling. So let's say in case uh, I'll give you an example of uh, uh, let's say a water bottle company. The water bottle company should be selling those water bottles on a, uh, on a, like a frequent basis, like on a monthly basis or a bi-monthly basis to basically allow financiers like invoice made to, uh, enable invoice financing prepositions for them. 
Yeah, that makes sense on the other side of the coin. So the retailers or, well, generally people that are financing these invoices, um, how do we get started there as a person that is interested in doing that? Yeah, so this is what InvoiceMate is bringing. What we are doing is we are tokenizing these invoices into real-world assets, and then we are creating a marketplace uh, to list those invoices and uh, allowing retail investors to invest in those short-term loan prepositions and earn somewhere between you know uh, 14% to 26% APY based on the risk of the preposition. So with the power of blockchain and with the power of Web3, this is now finally becoming possible where a century-old business, I, I, I can definitely say it's one of the oldest businesses in the book, the invoice financing business. But now that business, uh, through the power of Web3, we are democratizing it for retail investors to invest in those prepositions and park their stable coins in a real world, uh, I call it real world revenue, basically, in real world revenue generating uh, prepositions and grow their stable coin portfolio sustainably without any, uh, you know, uh, volatility aspects of the cryptocurrency market. Yeah, that is also making sense. I'm wondering if you can outline, um, yeah, when we can actually, as for example, IOTA community get into that. Is there a process, uh, planned for it or is there an onboarding? Maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea how that will, uh, play out practically on an, uh, retail user computer. How do we really interact with the platform in that sense? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Jonathan. And uh, soon, I would just say soon, I, I will not give exact dates, but we have already started building on IOTA EVM. We have a beta version of our marketplace, which will be launching soon on the EVM, uh, IOTA EVM. And uh, that all you need, all the, uh, the retail investors need to do is just a simple KYC and connect their wallets and they can start to invest in those prepositions. So uh, we're going to keep it very simple. We believe, we are a firm believer that uh, uh, Web3 mass adoption will come with a seamless user journey. And uh, most of our clients are traditional businesses and they're interacting with blockchain. They're interacting with cryptocurrencies, which they don't even feel, they don't even know about that they're interacting with these on-chain assets because our user journey is very streamlined, very seamless, allowing uh, even Web2 users to invest easily in those prepositions. So I would say very soon uh, we'll be launching the beta version of our marketplace on IOTA EVM allowing retail investors to basically invest in those loan prepositions. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how to ensure that these loans are actually paid in time. And of course, um, the I'm mixing up the borrowers and lenders all of the time, but the lenders in this case, of course, they want to avoid bad debt. So, yeah, I'm wondering what mechanism, what system is there in place to make sure that no bad debt accrues and all of the loans are paid in time? Right. So uh, we have processed till now more than uh, close to $50 million worth of invoice, uh, invoice financing, and we have zero bad debt so far. How we do that, that's actually unique for the industry as well. And this is where InvoiceMate has its uh, unique uh, selling preposition, a USP. How we do that, essentially, we have a technology called KYI, which is know your invoice. Just like KYC or KYB, this is know your invoice, where we, uh, through the power of AI, we help defraud those invoices, uh, actually fetch out if the invoices are fake or not, and see any credential uh, or if, if there is any collusion. We have more than 30 plus checkpoints that uh, analyze if the borrower or the invoice is fake and also analyze the financial history of the borrower and seeing that, okay, in the past, let's say six months, these invoices are paid on time or are there any delays or are there any bad debts, so on and so forth. So the whole analyzation process takes place in the KYI part. Once the that uh, process is analyzed and the data is being uh, defrauded, that all of that data is then stored on chain, allowing investors or lenders to have a transparent workflow and make diligent lending decisions. So because of our KYI, we help uh, investors invest in those prepositions uh, risk-free. We're not saying there won't be any bad debts, but due to the KYI service being one of its kind, it's truly remarkable in a sense that it's the world's first in a, our automated and immutable invoice verification and credit risk analysis uh, tool, which allows investors to be uh, as uh, away from bad debts as possible. 
Yeah, I've been having a look at your website and you had quite a lot of turnover and with zero bad debt accruing. Uh, I think that speaks very positively to, um, yeah, the system that you have in place here. Um, another thing that I've been wondering is, let's say, for example, there is a company in Japan that wants to have their invoice financed. I'm only in the possession of, let's say, USD stable coins. Um, how can we bring both parties together here? How would this work out? Yeah, so we work with the OTC providers uh, all over the world. Uh, how it happens is that uh, because, you know, the company in Japan or any traditional businesses, they don't have any use case of the USDC stable coins at the moment or USDT stable coins at the moment because they, they are not very um, widely adopted uh, in the traditional world. So in order to combat that challenge, we have integrated with multiple uh, OTC providers. So you being a lender with stable coins can invest in those uh, invest uh, in those uh, prepositions through a smart contract. Your uh funds will basically be credited to the borrower and then the borrower automatically receives stable coins in their bank account because we are already integrated with the, the OTC providers. So uh, neither you have to go to the hassle of first of all converting your stable coins into fiat and then uh, uh, basically investing nor the borrower has to first of all learn how to convert. So it's a very seamless journey where you won't feel that it's a web two product and the borrower won't feel it's a web three product. So we are sort of bridging it with our web 2.5 ish uh, narrative. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty amazed at uh, the fix you're saying here. It sounds very good, especially that you are putting so much emphasis on allowing the industry side of things to not have to uh, concern themselves with blockchain, private keys, all of that stuff. I think we are still pretty far away from companies really feeling comfortable doing that. And uh, yeah, still allowing Web3 to tap into that. I think, um, yeah, that is a very sensible approach that you're taking here. Um, also, one of the things that I've been reading about on your blog, again, I am somewhat new to invoice financing here, is your blog is referencing revenue-based financing, or in short, RBF. So that is basically already iterating on the existing invoice financing models. Um, can you point out what the benefits are? What are the improvements over the traditional way of handling it? Yeah, so essentially, uh, we saw that even recently in the current volatility of the uh, uh, crypto market, people have been losing funds left, right and center with DeFi protocols, uh, you know, uh, providing outrageous uh, uh, re yields through uh, farming and all of those uh, sort of algorithmic trading and all that, which are based on the uh, volatility of the uh, cryptocurrency market. We wanted to come up with a product that allows uh, investors to invest in stable and secure prepositions. This is our motto that we want stable and secure prepositions, which allow the, uh, which allow your gains. So example, in a bull market, people earn m money and uh, uh, the, sta uh, the, the tokens uh, multiply, right? But th then there's a, once there's a bull market, there's always a bear market, right? So in order to park your stable coins in a, sort of uh, stable and secure yields uh, yield preposition you need to have some sort of pegging towards the real world so when we, when we talk about revenue based financing which is coming from real world revenue it essentially allows uh, the on chain investors to get a taste of the real world yield without the volatility so we still offer 20% apy which is far greater than uh, the us uh, the tre treasury bills and it is still uh, somewhat similar in security wise. So that's, that's the goal here. And that's how we are differentiating from other uh, players. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And you're totally right. Of course, whenever there's a bear market coming, the yields are crashing everywhere. And yeah, getting 20% API on a stable coin is hard to find in market conditions like this. So having the opportunity to still hold crypto and participate in a market that is not that affected by, um, yeah, market conditions worsening. Uh, that is certainly great to have. Love to hear that. Um, yeah, so last week we had Tenity here on for Builds here. And uh, yeah, you're going through an accelerator with them. And that is going to accumulate in a demo day at Token 2049 uh, mid-September in Singapore. So yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit about the experience overall joining an accelerator and then of course the grande finale. What are your expectations and yeah, anything in this direction that would be interesting to hear. 
Yeah, for sure. We've been part of the program now for quite uh, some uh, weeks now, and it's been really a blast. To be very honest, I have uh, gotten so much to learn from the guys at Tenity with the experience they bring in from their accelerated program. Uh, it really is, if anyone over here is building a startup, I would highly suggest that uh, the easiest way to uh, uh, success in, in a startup is that you join an accelerated program as soon as possible. We have been uh, now part of multiple accelerator programs and to be uh, very, uh, very honest, all of them have provided us with a lot of value in terms of, if not funding, in terms of a lot of uh, personal growth and professional growth as well. So yeah, pretty excited about the demo day as well. Uh, I'll be flying to Singapore, especially for that. And it's going to be amazing. I've seen the guest list and the VC list. It's going to be really packed and Super excited about it. Hopefully, will you guys will see some bit of a surprise over there as well from Invoice Mate. So I would say if you can, uh, if you're participating in the demo day in terms of attending it, uh, please uh, watch out. We have something in plan for that. So hopefully you'll get a first glimpse of our uh, new unveiling that we're planning to do. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. With a little bit of mystique sprinkled in there. All right. I'll be very interested to see how that plays out. And of course, uh, fingers crossed for you guys that, yeah, you get out of that uh, what you're wishing for. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the roadmap ahead. Um, yeah, you've been already hinting at the gates opening soon for retail uh, users, but yeah, generally, have you, um, yeah, maybe you can talk us a little bit through your roadmap. What are the things you have planned? Of course, timelines are always a little bit iffy, but yeah, anything that you can offer us, we will gladly, um, yeah, hear more in this direction. Perfect. No, uh, when you talk about roadmap, let me take you two steps back and tell you where we are right now, and then I'll go on to what we'll be doing next. So Invoice Mate uh, as a product has been live since July 2023 for institutional investors. By institutional investors, I mean big crypto hedge funds, blockchain foundations, and uh, uh, banks, uh, traditional banks, traditional fintechs. We've already partnered up with a couple of banks uh, in UAE, a couple of banks in Pakistan, a couple of fintechs uh, around the world as well. And we've already been live with them. That's why when I say we processed close to 50 million, that's how we have processed more uh, close to that. Yeah. So that part has been live since uh, last July in 2024. Uh, uh, yeah. 2023 July, we've been live since then. So now what we are planning to do is that uh, the beta version of the RWA marketplace that we are launching for the retail investor, that's going to be the number one priority uh, as of now. That will be hopefully coming soon within the next couple of months. Um, by a couple of months, I don't mean six or eight months. It'll be in one or two maximum. That's that's the timeline that we are focusing on uh, for the RWB marketplace. Then the big milestone we have is our token launch, which we are planning uh, also fairly soon after the launch of the marketplace. So watch out for that as well. We'll be launching our token with the ecosystem-wide uh, uh, incentivization. So any participation in the RWA marketplace early on will incentivize uh, the uh, uh, investors very heavily in terms of our token. So that's the two major milestones that are coming up uh, that I can share with you guys. Rest, you guys have to just stay tuned and uh, watch out for the updates. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. So, um, there is also a token coming up and it will be given to platform participants. Uh, yeah, that sounds very interesting as well. Um, yeah, I think we're at a good stage right now to let anybody on stage. If you have a question, then please raise your hand and we'll get you here up on stage. Um, yeah, while that invitation is lingering, um, Ibrahim, I'm wondering like, how can we support you as a community? I know, let me tell you that there has been quite a lot of interest in invoice mates. So a lot of people in the community are very eagerly awaiting that you are opening the gates. So yeah, let us know how we can support. And I think a lot of people would be happy to do so. Yes, of course. Uh, the first of all, the major support would be if you could show some love to the social media channels and the Telegram chats. That would be amazing. Uh, we have a lot of uh, exciting updates in the Telegram channel and a lot of exciting updates on the social medias as well. So I would say that's the best way you guys can support. And I'm very like uh, I, and I speak on behalf of the whole team. We are very excited to be part of the I IOTA ecosystem being backed by IOTA Foundation. 
uh, in a strategical funding round as well. So that has uh, helped us a lot and also in uh, terms of the community building. So very, very exciting things coming up uh, uh, with IOTA EVM. Also, we might be launching something soon with uh, some upcoming uh, stable coins on IOTA. You never know. Uh, it's, it's a possibility and uh, something might be in work. So just hinting it there. So a lot of exciting things coming up. So I would just say stay tuned on the socials and the Telegram chats. Awesome. Yeah, that is a great call to action and very curious about all of the, yeah, things you have been hinting at and seeing them to come to fruition. All right. So, um, yeah, no question. That is always a sign for a concise answer. So yeah, thank you so much, Ibrahim. Um, I think with that, we are at the end of our build space here. Yeah. Ibra oh, we have a request coming in hot. Noah, let's get you up on stage. All right, let's see if that works out. Yes, Noah, you're a speaker, please. No, you, now you're back to listener. Um, Can you hear me? Nah, yeah, it's working. Perfect. Let's see your Great. question, please. Uh, apologies if this was covered. I may have missed it. I got in a bit late, but uh, just curious how how you see IOTA fitting into the roadmap and, and your stack today in the future and sort of your main reasons for selecting uh, it to work with and, and build uh, your product on top of. Thanks. Right, that's a good question. And we covered partially it, uh, partially that, so I'll tell you uh, furthermore. With IOTA, we have started to build on the IOTA EVM, integrate our marketplace on IOTA EVM to allow uh, uh, retail investors from the IOTA community to invest in those short-term loan prepositions. That's the number one part. Number two part is going to be fiddling in more into the IOTA ecosystem with the upcoming uh, stable coins and also with the, the new focus on the RWA uh, narrative. That's uh, one of the also reasons that we decided to go with IOTA as well. I had a couple of uh, conversations with Harry from the IOTA Foundation. We really align on the vision uh, that uh, uh, IOTA has and uh, the vision that InvoiceMed also has. So that's one of the major parts that uh, basically pushed us uh, to, uh, towards going to uh, IOTA. And uh, I see a lot of potential in the community for the RWA uh, scene. So I'm very bullish on the fact that IOTA is now venturing into the RW narrative because we truly believe that this is the only narrative in crypto as of now, except gaming, that can bring the next one or two million users on in the Web3 spectrum. Awesome. Thank you so much for your question, Noah. Um, I'll get you off of stage. If you have a follow up, then please raise your hand again. Um, let's see if we have another question here. Uh, doesn't look like it. So yeah. Let's see if I missed a comment. Yeah, there is one more question that we could probably cover, and that is from Token Iota Nice. Question is, what's the split between institutional and retail investors in terms of capital raised? I think that is uh, speaking to your funding. Up to you, of course, if that is something that you want to cover, Ibrahim, um, or maybe you understood the question differently than I did. If it's about uh, fundraising, then, of course, it's all institutional capital. We don't fundraise from retail as of now before our public sale, which will be happening very soon. But if you're talking about uh, invoice financing liquidity, that's majorly been institutional as of now. That's why when we plan to launch this marketplace, we plan to target the retail investors. Till now, it's been majorly institutional capital that has been flowed uh, into the invoice financing prepositions. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Token. I'm having trouble with your name, mate. <laughs> Token. Yeah. We'll have to get the editor on this, uh, and cut that one out or make it sound properly. But thanks so much for your question. Um, yeah. With that, I think we covered all of the questions. And with that, I'm only.
basically left to say thank you, Ibrahim, for joining us. Uh, it's been a real blast. Uh, great mic quality. Have to point it out once more. And I'm leaving the space a lot smarter in terms of invoice financing. And yeah, you got me a lot. You got me really excited about all of the stuff that is coming up. Um, yeah. Any parting words that you want us to take away from this space? You know, first of all, thank you so much for having me and uh, appreciate the kind comments on the mic, although I'm on my basic uh, computer, but I'm glad to see that it's uh, working well. Uh, parting comments, uh, thank you so much, guys, for uh, attending the space, and I hope you guys learned something about invoice made and also about invoice financing in general. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out uh, uh, to in our Telegram chat if you have any questions about it. Or uh, if you have uh, anything else to talk about in the chat, always uh, happy to engage with the community members. And yeah, just uh, I'm really bullish on IOTA, really bullish on invoice made. So looking forward to uh, working with you guys at IOTA. Likewise, Ibrahim. Great closing statement. And with that, um, yeah, of course, this episode, as any other, has been for informational purposes only. So, yeah, thanks again, Ibrahim. Thanks, everybody who joined in. Thanks, everybody, especially for asking questions. That is always very much appreciated. And, yeah, hopefully see you then around for next week's Build Sphere episode. We have another great guest lined up for that one. So, yeah, thanks again. Have a great rest of the day and see you on this. Discord. Take care. Bye-bye.